Hey guys, I'm Andre from PSD Box, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I will show you how to mask glass and transparent objects. Uh, I got a lot of requests to make uh, this uh, tutorial, and well, here it is. I didn't have time to make it, so, uh, but well, uh, here you have it. I'll show you two techniques uh, to mask glass, and I'll show you how to go from this image to this. So I'll show you how to mask transparency and keep the, the reflections and stuff like that. So let's get started. Okay, so if you want to mask objects like this uh, transparent bottle that I have here, I suggest you use stock images that have a really simple background. So you can see this bottle was shot against a white background. It has nothing uh, else than the white background. And that's because this will make your job a lot easier when, when masking. So uh, the color doesn't really matter because uh, we, we will mask it the same way. But uh, if it's a clean background, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to mask. I'll show you two techniques. The first one uh, works, but not uh, not really well in some cases, and it only works on white backgrounds. And all you need to do is, once you open your image, double click on the layer and the layer styles uh, open. And in fact, I talked about this when I when I showed you how to mask hair without using uh, without using blend modes. And um, I'll put a view here if you want to see it. If you click on it, it, it will take you to that uh, tutorial. It was a quick tip, uh, I think. And uh, well, once the layer styles open, you can see uh, you can see this uh, two sliders here on the blending option uh, options. Uh, by the way, this um, is available in all Photoshop versions. And you can see these two sliders here. And if you take the top slider and if you click on this uh, and move it to the left, you can see the white parts go away. And uh, you, all you, all that's left here is the structure, so to say, of the bottle. And if you press and hold the Alt key, this uh, allows you to make fine adjustments. But as I said, this only works for images that were shot against a pure white uh, background, because you can see that uh, some textures here on the on the um, on the bottle are not white, so uh, you start to lose. Um, details really really quickly but you can combine this for example you can uh, make something like that like I did here and then just duplicate this and I'll get rid of this uh, on the top layer I'll leave it like it was and maybe try blend mode like for example multiply because uh, we know that with the multiply blend mode the white parts go away but even so it doesn't work really well so you have a lot of uh, you can you have to mask a lot to get it to look uh, to to look nice. So let's try another technique which is a bit more advanced and gives you a lot better result. So uh, actually, what I'll do is undo because I need the the original image here. And uh, one advice that I would give you is always uh, when you have an object like this, always use the pen tool or another um, another uh, selection tool to keep the to keep the the shape of the bottle okay because uh, later on when you uh, start to stack up layers you might want to use uh, the shape of the bottle to add some effects and in fact we will use that i'll show you how so what i'll do is get the pen tool uh, set this to path you can use uh, the magnet lasso tool if you want or other in the quick selection tool whatever you want but i like the pen tool so what i'll do is draw a quick um, path around it okay with the control uh, key and with the alt key you can adjust these points i'll make a really quick selection here i don't want to spend too much time and in fact i'll pause the video and uh, fast forward okay so now i have this path uh, i made this path around around the bottle and right, right, I'll right click now and choose make selection. Click OK and create the click on the layer mask icon. And now I have the silhouette of the bottle, but we still need to mask the inside of it. But uh, this layer mask uh, will be uh, makes uh, keeps the, the, the shape of the bottle. So uh, I want to make, uh, I want to add another layer mask. So what I will do is right click and choose convert smart object because that way looks like the layer mask is applied, but in fact, it's just um, turned this into a smart object. Now I can create another one. And what I will do now is use the, um, is use the color range, okay? 
So I'll hold the control key and click on this bottle because that way I can select the shape of it and then go to select and choose um, color range. Okay, so from here you can see that uh, this tool allows you to select, um, let me set this to 100%. It allows you to select um, colors, okay? And what we want, the object here to make a realistic masking is we wanna keep all these highlights, okay, the reflections, and also this uh, green parts. Uh, these are parts where the lights can get through, so to say. So we will not be able to see the background through these darker parts. And also we will, we should not be able to see the background through this uh, white reflection. So all these reflections give realism and makes it look like uh, it's actually a bottle, okay? And let's go back to the color range. So what I wanna do here is, uh, I'll cancel it once again. I want to get rid of all these parts, but keep this highlights and this, uh, Okay, so I will click somewhere here to select all similar areas. Let's go back to color range. So I'll click somewhere here. You can also um, you can also look here on this uh, uh, thumbnail here to select, and I'll probably change the selection preview to something like grayscale. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Okay, so see all these dark parts. These are the highlights. Okay, and uh, these are parts that uh, will not be masked. So everything that is white here will be masked. And if you want to add colors to your selection, press and hold the shift key and click. And you can see you can add that area to the selection. And we want to keep this part fairly dark. I don't care too much about this because this is a solid area which I can mask after that. I just want to make sure that I have, uh, I separate the highlights from uh, from the rest of the, of the background. Okay, and then you can use the fuzziness and uh, the range here uh, to adjust to adjust your selection. Uh, let's leave the fuzziness low. Okay, not too low. We d you don't wanna keep the fuzziness too high because that smoothens too much and you can see it starts to select this part here of the cork, which uh, we don't want. We wanna keep it fairly sharp and something like that. Maybe let's see what we can do with the range here. Not too much. Okay, let's see if it works. You can also try with the localized color clusters. If you have previous versions of Photoshop, maybe this is a bit different, but it works the same way. Okay, uh, let's leave it like that and click OK. And you can see we have it masked, but it's, the mask is inverted. So what I, what I will do is press Control Command I to invert it. And you can see how it looks. We have uh, all the highlights, we have this parts here, so the structure of the bottle uh, looks okay, but it, you can see it's too flat, it doesn't really look like uh, a real bottle. So in Photoshop CS6, what you can do is, if you double click on the layer mask, uh, this uh, properties window uh, opens, and you can see this density slider, if you slide it to the left, you can start to reveal, and you can see the layer mask becomes gray, because this is just, um, it's sort of like the opacity of the layer mask, okay? So if you leave it to zero, the, the layer mask is white, even though you have stuff in there, you paint it with black. If you, even if you paint with a, with a black, uh, with a black color with a brush, nothing will be visible because we, you, we have this, uh, let's call it opacity set to zero, okay? So you can uh, lower this uh, to uh, something that you like, and you can also, use the feather, okay? The feather is um, sort of like um, the Gaussian blur, okay? If you increase this, you can see it becomes smoother. And if you decrease the density to zero, the feather has no effect because the layer mask is not visible. I suggest you leave the feather to zero or maybe a really, really low value. I, I will leave it to zero and decrease the density to, let's see, about 68%. Okay, and if it doesn't look, uh, look realistic, it's because, uh, well, you should try the, you should try the color range again and, and do it again. And let me drop it even more. Okay, something like that. And if you don't have Photoshop CS6, if you don't have this uh, density, what you can do, uh, let me leave the density to 100% just to show you what you can do, is press Control Command U to load the free, uh, to load the hue saturation. Let's see if we can do that. 
I think we cannot do it. Adjustments, no, we cannot do it. Uh, open the levels or the curves, let's open the levels. And here on this bottom slider, see that? You can change the output levels and slide this to the uh, to the right and you can see you make this this shadows uh, brighter and that way you can you you can get the same effect the only problem with this is that this is a destructive uh, editing so to say once you click okay you cannot well you can you can you can undo it if you if you play with this uh, but uh, well in photoshop cs it's a lot easier because we have this uh, density slider okay Okay, so let's leave it like that. And um, here on the on the top part, you can uh, if some parts are visible through this part here, which we don't want. Let me reset my brushes. Okay, just use a hard brush and paint with white. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, uh, with white. And that way, well, looks like uh, it was masked uh, perfectly. So I don't have to mask anything here. So if you need to fix areas, just use uh, the brush tool and just uh, paint over areas that you think uh, should not be masked. Like for example, maybe this bottom part. And you can also paint with gray if you want to mask it just a bit. Okay. Uh, but use a soft brush. Okay, I don't want to make the video too long, so I'll probably leave it like that. So what I what I what I want to say is that you don't be afraid of using the the brush tool, okay? Uh, you can use low opacity brushes, just uh, gradually make the, the, some parts more transparent than others, okay? And then what I did is I uh, created some shadow uh, to make it a bit more realistic, but that well that depends on the kind of editing you want to do and what you're looking for. Uh, it's too strong. I'm making it really, really quick. Okay, something like that, maybe. Okay, and if you want to make it even better, what you can do, um, I should have done that before. What I'll do is open this. Uh, I, I will open this smart object and select the entire canvas and go to edit, copy, merge. Before you do all this uh, masking stuff, you can duplicate the layer because what I want to do is paste it on top of it and use blend mode, okay? And you'll see that it will look a bit better. Uh, I wanna perfectly match the position. Uh, I don't know if it's right on top, okay. So what I, you can see this was the original image and you can try blend modes. Um, the color burn worked well for this particular image, okay? Because it had, it had that um, white background and with the multiply and the color burn what they do uh, with these blend modes the white bits go away and then for this part which is too dark I can use a layer mask and brush uh, part of it to make it brighter because I only want that effect here on the part of the bottle okay so you can see it looks it looks a bit more realistic well so that's uh, that's how you can mask uh, objects. Uh, let me show you how it looks on a solid color. Okay, so you can see through it. It looks uh, quite realistic. You can see that white, uh, that red, sorry, that red background through uh, through the bottle. So we achieved our objective. So I hope you liked uh, this tutorial. It was not, uh, I hope it's not too difficult. And if you have any questions, just, uh, if, or if you know any other techniques, you can post them on my website or on my YouTube channel. And well, that's all for, for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.